the suspect by Jurik Becker. Please believe me that I regard the security of the state as something that is worth protecting with almost all one's might. It is not psychophancy and the hope that a certain government department might be more kindly disposed towards me that lies behind this confession. I just have a need to say it, even though I have been regarded for some time as someone who endangers the aforementioned security. That I should have gained such a reputation shocks and embarrasses me. As far as I know, I have not given the slightest cause to be suspected of anything whatever. Since my childhood, I have been a committed citizen. At least I have striven to be. I have no idea where and when I might have expressed an opinion that did not conform to that, promoted by the state, and hence did not coincide with my own. If I did split up, it could only be due to a lack of concentration. The eye of the state, I hope, is experienced and sharp enough to recognize dangers as such an overlooked trifles that are anything but dangerous. And yet, something must have happened around me, which provided sufficient reason to focus attention on me. Perhaps someone will understand me when I say, now I am glad that I do not know what it was. If I knew, I would probably try to efface the unfavorable impression and just make everything worse. As it is, I can go about my business in a carefree manner. At least I am getting there. In the meantime, it will have become clear that I am being observed. My situation is complicated considerably by the fact that I regard such a procedure as useful in principle, indeed as essential, but in my case at pointless, and if I may speak freely, offensive. A man called Brooklyn, whom I had regarded as loyal to the government until then, told me one day that I was being observed. Naturally, I broke off all contact with him immediately. I did not believe a word of what he said. Me under observation. I had almost put the whole matter well behind me when an extraordinary letter reached me. At first it seemed that it was from an acquaintance from the neighboring state, with whom I had been good friends at school. It was an envelope of a type that he had been using for years. It had his handwriting on it, and on the back his name was printed. But the letter I took out of the envelope had nothing to do with him or me. It was addressed to a certain Oswald Schulte, and signed by a certain Mrs. Trude Danzig. Two people of those existence I had known nothing until that moment. I immediately remembered Bogland's hint again. The letters must have got mixed up in the Bureau of Surveillance after they had been checked. To put it another way, I now had conclusive evidence that I was being watched. We all know that in moments of shock we can be inclined to panic, and I did not behave any differently. I had hardly finished reading the letter when I grabbed the telephone book, found Oswald Schulte's number and rang him. When he answered, I asked him whether he knew Trude Danzig. It was an altogether superfluous question after the letter, but I in my panic asked it. Mr. Schulte replied, yes, he knew Mrs. Danzig well, and he asked whether I had a message from her. I was about to explain to him what strange circumstances had brought us together, when it suddenly hit me how unbelievable foolish I was behaving. I put the receiver down and sat there in state of despair. I said to myself only far too late that people whose letters are inspected probably have their telephones tapped. As far as the bureau was concerned, one person under surveillance was now in contact with another, and to make things even worse, I had broken off the conversation before any reference had been made to the mixed-up letters.